another day, another negative slay. Welcome back to Brunch with Desby. I am drinking a blue slush today from Alani Nutrition, The Vibe. And no, this episode is not sponsored by them, but I am. So if you ever shop Alani Nutrition, use code Desby at checkout. Blue slush is always a vibe, but especially today because I'm blue and I'm feeling all right, baby. I'm gonna have the best fucking night of my life. Just kidding. I don't really know. I'm not really feeling blue, to be honest. If anything, I'm feeling... I'm feeling raspberry. I'm feeling pink. I'm feeling berry colored. Summer, end of summer into fall, transitional color. That's how I'm feeling. So I'm actually wearing Petula Active. Are we fucking shocked? I feel like every episode, I'm genuinely wearing Petula. Am I right or am I right, honestly? So these actually launched yesterday. And the thing that I love about Petula and that I've said multiple times is that uh, they never really sell out you know, in the best way possible. It's not because their stuff's not good. It's just because they actually buy enough shit. They buy enough stock. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited because you can probably go shop this right now and we can, you know, twins match, spirit fingers, spirit fingers. Anyways, happy Sunday. I really haven't said much in this first minute and a half already, but um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good this, uh, this week, today, this week. Okay. You can tell I still haven't made the bed behind me. My mother-in-law is actually coming in today. Um, sorry, I'm not like, I'm not doing it. I, I, I have to release certain energy in my life and I'm like, Hey, why can you just, can you do that? Like, I just, I can't, you know what I'm saying? There's certain like battles mentally and I can't slay that dragon. It sounds so silly. Cause it's just like, a putting bedding on, but you know, there's something about it when you've been looking at it for long enough and you're just like, I'm not fucking doing it. It's like Wolf of Wall Street. I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. That's how I feel. I'm not fucking doing it period. You know what I'm saying? So we have a, a fun episode today. <laughs> As I came down here, and I mean, quite literally had nothing prepared. But I did get a lot of feedback last week from you guys. Um, and I really loved it. Don't look at my feet. <laughs> I really loved it because the biggest thing that I find for myself in this podcast is that it is my emotional release. It's my place to get away for an hour outside of like the gym or anything like that. And just like sit and talk and like be in my thoughts, have you be in your thoughts when you're listening and we just vibe together. Right. And so many of you guys reached out to me last week or commented on the YouTube video and we're just so sweet. Like, I love this podcast. I love just like listening. Like that's what I love most about it is that I just, I come on and it's like a long phone call with my friend. And that's, that is me. Like that is me. I just, I talk out of my ass. I don't really have like a script. I've never had a script, but sometimes I'll have talking points. Like if I really want to talk about a certain show or like a certain like blurb in the celebrity world, something right. But I, other than that, I don't like come down with, with thoughts. I don't even have time to think. Okay. I don't have time to think in my day when I come down here is when I actually think. So if anything, you're getting my truest, most authentic self. (laughs) So as much as I say, we have a great episode. Like, do I, I don't know you know, we'll see. I did want to do a few, tell me a secrets, um, and kind of go, you know, dive into there at the later end of the episode, but not much is, is new this week. I mean, like I said, Petula launch, we have a buff bunny launch as well. Um, we had the Paragon restock of like some core collection and let's actually talk about Paragon for a second. Let's segue there really quickly only because I did, I did kind of bash them last week and actually, no, I didn't at all. I, I did not at all. And I stand by that, but I, I was just very honest and like, Hey, like, what do you think's going on? So I had, I had a mixed feedback. I had some people come back and say, Hey Des, I bought Petula. I gen, or I'm sorry, bought Paragon and I really love it. Um, you know, you're, you've gone through a lot. Don't put too much pressure on yourself and like your body and how it feels. So I got that. And then on the other hand, I got some people that are like, yeah, Paragon, like, compared to these other brands that I've tried in like the price point, I'm going to spend an extra $10 or $8 to get a better quality legging or better quality bra or something like that. Right. So I will say the one thing that I always stand by is the Reluna fabric. You will catch me wearing Reluna fabric all the time. Do I still genuinely think it's a little overpriced? for the quality of fabric and the wear and the durability. Yeah. And I'll, I'll stand by that. I think there's margins that you have to hit as a business. I'm not in the business. I don't care. I would never even share that if I did know, but they're doing something for a reason and I can respect that. But I, I miss that their old saying was luxury at an affordable price. Like that was literally the, what's the fucking word? Um, Oh my God. What is it? Mission statement kind of right. Like luxury at an affordable price. That's what they put everywhere. And let me tell you what, I don't see that tagline anymore, anywhere. 
Um, and I think we might have phased out of that because it's not necessarily as affordable as it as it once was. And again, I understand the evolution of a company and, you know, having to you can't always be the cheapest, right? Or else you'll drive yourself to bankruptcy or big financial issues. So I get it. But I I do love Reluna. I do typically love Rec Stretch. I don't I don't know. There's just something about it right now that I'm just kind of like, is where where are we like I don't know. Are we getting better? I don't know. That's all I'm saying. Watch the next collection though, be badass and me be like, I'm choking on my words. So again, I'm not saying this is like an end all be all statement on that company. You guys know I've rode for Paragon since like fucking forever. This is not a, oh, I'm done supporting them. That's not how this is. Okay. This is an honest, transparent conversation as someone who wants you guys to use their code, right? Like I'm not going to sit here and feed you bullshit. Like, sorry, I'm not like every other influencer who just like sucks off every company. Like if I don't like something, I'm going to fucking tell you that. Okay. And right now I just, I don't like that, but I do like Reluna, but I also have a weird body right now. And I can admit to that. So speaking of postpartum, guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of like feeling good. Okay. Like, like body wise, like I feel like around week eight, like postpartum week eight. I mean, it's been two months. That's, that's a good amount of time, right? I start to kind of feel a little bit myself, right? I start to, let me preface that by not at all myself, but like body wise, like I'm fitting into some clothes that feel a little bit more comfortable. My leggings are feeling more comfortable. I start to like lose fat in kind of like my legs and my arms and my back, like in my stomach, even like I can just see my body like snapping back into my normal self. Right. And it's so crazy to me because the amount of change your body goes into your body goes through into pregnancy is it's amazing. It's amazing. Like I put a photo side by side of me at like 38 weeks, almost 39. One of my last workouts to now. And it was like literally astronomical to see what shape the body takes to carry literal life. It is so cool. And that does not mean it's not uncomfortable because listen, I gained a little, I gained a little over 50 pounds, 50 pounds of body weight that you are not used to having on your body in any capacity that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, crazy. Okay. And in terms of just like the body and the way that it will respond, like it knows what to do to get back to, you know, your normal self. And I just think it's so cool. And I I guess I shouldn't say your normal self. Like you're always different after pregnancy, you know? And I think this, this third baby so far has just been kind of like, whoa, like this felt very different to come back from, but I'm starting to feel better. And, you know, you just have to continue to give it time. And if you're someone who has gone through it, currently going through it, or has not gone through pregnancy yet, but when, you know, one day you want to have a family, it's, it is such a sacrifice. It really is. And you are so allowed to not love your body. Do you know what I'm saying? Like to come out of pregnancy and be like, oh my God, I love this body. You can love it for knowing what it did for you and what it carried and all that stuff. But in the same breath, you can hold space for two things at once by loving it and what it did, but also not loving it because it's, it's still not yours, you know, like it's still not your body, especially when you go right into breastfeeding and you're like giving up your body in a different way as well. Like it can feel like a lot and you're allowed to feel those emotions. So I'm very excited though. Cause I'm, like I said, I'm feeling better. Our challenge Um, six weeks to strength challenge is actually live today. I'm so fucking excited. I've not really been in a consistent gym regimen since I was released. You know, I've dibbled, I've dabbled, I've done some strong ass mom. I tested the workouts for strength, like, you know, but I've not really like hit it with intention. And I'm really excited because I love our programs. I love doing them with you, but I'm also really stoked to give myself like six weeks and that'll take me all the way up to almost about like four months postpartum, like probably about 16 weeks I'll be by the end of the challenge. And so I'm, I'm super stoked to just like go into the fall season and like fit girl fall it with you guys. So if you have not signed up, please do. You can go to uh, my website, Desby Fit Training, and then go to the drop tab where it says challenge. You can sign up there. It's also my link in my bio. It's in the show notes right now, the description box, wherever the fuck we are. 
you can sign up there. I'm really excited. We have specific pregnancy postpartum workouts. We have all the workouts are made for at home. I'm genuinely working out only at home right now for the most part. Um, it's, it's just really hard to leave for the gym with Evie right now. Cause she just, her naps can be sporadic and naturally I just get a lot of guilt of asking like Wyatt to watch her. Like, I, I don't know why it's so embarrassing and it's so dumb to even say it's like, yeah, you're, like, you're her father, like watch the kid, like be a parent. But like as a mom, it's hard to ask for that. And again, I'm uh, that's on me. Like, I'm just not asking. I'm not expecting because I just feel like as a baby, like as a mom, you just have like more patience maybe. And like, you know how to soothe them. And, and sometimes dads can just get frantic and like overstimulated because they don't, they don't have a nipple. They don't have tits. They don't have a boob, you know, especially if you're like breastfeeding. So I get it. It can be very like, oh my gosh, how do I get her to stop crying? Like she's hungry. So then all of a sudden I get a text she's hungry. Like you need to come home or like whatever. And I'm like, fuck. So I'd rather work out in the gym where I can take a break or have her here and be a little bit more efficient with my time. With that being said, if that's where you're at right now in your journey, like I'm with you, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's one thing I take. And I always will say, I take pride in like my, my challenges, my programs is like, I've done them too. I've done them all pregnant. I've done them all postpartum. I've done them all in my basement. I've done them all in my old garage gym. I've done them all in a gym. I've done them all in a very limited equipment gym. I've done, you know, I know for a fact they can be done anywhere. And I have proven that myself. Like I, I do it with you. So if you're looking for that, looking for a little community, I'm really excited. We have coach spots. We have uncoached spots. And yeah, I'm just stoked. I, I, I'm, ready to say goodbye to the six weeks to strength, six weeks to slay, six weeks to shreds. I don't know what we're going to transition it into. I'm just looking to like rejuvenate it, whether it's like a new, a new look, a new challenge style, a new, I don't know. I just, I don't want to like completely restructure it. That's not the goal, but I want like a fresh, I want a fresh energy to it. Does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I just, I really want to get like, sit down and be creative and think, okay, what, what do I want this next era of challenges to look like. So at the end of the day, like next year, I'm going to be turning 30 and it, it, it marks a new decade for myself as well. And I think even a lot of you who have just are stepping into a new chapter of life, like most of you here listening, like, uh, we're fucking adults now. Okay. Like we're not just like dicking around and doing nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Like we're busy, like we're balancing shit now. And it's, it's crazy. I look back and I mean, I just have so much stuff coming up next year. I turn 30. My brother turns 18. My mom turns 50. Wyatt and I have our 10 year anniversary at the end of this. Well, in September, we have our fifth year wedding anniversary, 10 years of like quote unquote dating. Right. And so it's just like next year's a big year for me. And I I just really want to grab it by the dick and just like airplane it, you know, like, woo, like my time to shine, bitch. Like, let's go kind of a resurgence. I remember my, uh, 20, when I turned 23, that was 2018. That was a big year for me too. You know, I don't, I don't know why 23, but I called it my Jordan year and next year it's just dirty 30 bitch. Like I'm getting dirty, flirty, 30 thriving, thrumping. I don't know. I almost said thruple. Imagine hell no, would never be me. I'm too jealous, but I I'm just really excited. So I want to usher in a new year with you guys and, and have a lot of just a new energy to really bring in this new part of me, because I think for quite a few years, and I've mentioned this before, probably since COVID when my life truly changed, like, you know, I became pregnant and also COVID in general, I think changed a lot of us. It's a very like definitive timeline of our lives where we'll always refer back to like, God, you remember during COVID? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, oh, remember 2010? Like it's gonna, it's always going to be defined as COVID, right? And once that changed for me, I think I, I so badly tried to hold on to this version of myself that I thought other people wanted meaning like just nothing but gym, 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 gym. And in reality, I think I've phased out of that knowing that like, I am so much more than working out. Although that is my business and my space and what I love. A lot of people can trust what I do by just showing the rest of my life too. And like in capturing that, I don't know how to explain it anyway. So I just, I've changed a lot. A lot has changed and I'm ready to change our challenges and stuff and the membership and all the stuff to come. You know, I just, it's, 
it's that time and I'm excited. So anyway, sorry, just like yapped off about that. I kind of went into different segues there, but it's hard. It can be hard to, to transition into like a new part of you when you're always kind of holding on to that older version, but she's, you know, she's not coming back. And that's really a tough pill to swallow too. When you, when you look back and I mean, oh my God, I've been looking back at like old videos and photos of, of me and just reflecting on, you know, where I was in high school and like where I was during volleyball and in college and when White and I first met to like now. And it's just such a version of yourself that you feel like is such in reach. Like you're like, oh, that girl is right there. But like, she's not like, she's so far gone now. And so much has happened. And sometimes, you know, you think, oh man, I would give anything to go back to like that period of my life just for a day. And, and every time I pass a fleeting moment of time, right? Like you think that, oh man, I wish I could relive that moment. And so I've really tried to like just presently live to where I, I naturally you're going to have those emotions. Oh, I wish I would have, I wish I could go back to that. But like, I want to live so present where, you know, you look back and what's the cliche phrase, you know, you, you look back and you say, these are the days you want to live in, or I'm sorry, you look back and say, those were the days you want to live in them now and be able to consciously be like, these are the days, you know, like one day I'm going to look back and be like, those were the days. So like live it so fully now. Oh my God. Are we crying today? Is anyone, anyone else out there? <laughs> Hello? Are we okay? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's take a fucking sip real quick. Honestly, like that was kind of heavy. I don't know. How did we get into like, join my challenge? Let's get fit. Let's get ripped tonight. R.I.P. that pussy. Hey. And then all of a sudden we're like, be in the present. Be in the now. Cheers. <laughs> this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. I talk about BetterHelp a lot, seeing as that it's benefited me in the past two years. Some people think, you know, maybe, oh, things have to get really bad until you can go to therapy. You're like, I'm not depressed. Why do I need therapy? But really therapy is a tool to where you're using it before things were to get worse and to avoid being at your lowest low. I don't know about you, but why the fuck would you want to get to your lowest low before you climb out to the, to the top again, right? Better help is customized online therapy that offers video and even live chat sessions with your therapist. You don't have to see anyone on your camera. You don't have to wear pants. You don't even have to put on pajamas. You could be naked wherever you're at and do a therapy session with your therapist. So for me personally, I like to put my AirPods in. I'll walk around my desk room. I'll go for a walk outside when it's nice out, whatever it may be. And that's what works for me. It is customizable and it is more affordable than most in-person therapy. Give it a try. See why over two million, million, trillion people have used BetterHelp Online Therapy. And girls, don't forget to get on betterhelp.com slash desby and put in that discount code. If you forget that, you do not get that 10% off your first month. And that is the deal with being a listener of Brunch with Desby. Do you guys ever notice pauses in podcasts? Does that make you uncomfortable or does it feel more conversational? Because sometimes I wonder if like I've I've had a few podcasts I listen to, right? And they like don't talk for a second. I'm like, I'm like, is my shit broke? <laughs> Did this just fucking pause? And then they're like, anyways, um, and I'm like, oh shit, they just took a break. I don't know. We're so used, I think, to like stimulus all the time that when people like take a break or they they're like not speaking, you're like, um, is did they just die? <laughs> so anyways, I don't I honestly don't have any like notes or anything to really reflect on what the, the past week held, which is so incredibly funny because I, I genuinely I can't tell you what the last week um entailed. There's a few things at top of mind um in terms of TV and like watches. So number one, the murder of Steve McNair that's on Netflix. Very interesting story. It was about a famous, I think it was a quarterback, big, big ass quarterback who was murdered. And, um, that was, that was wild. That's a good one to watch. Again, I, I try to like, I want to tell you guys what I'm watching, but I don't want to like ruin it for you. So I, I, I sometimes like to give more of like recommendations and then maybe we can like revisit it in the future. 
Bachelorette um, is almost done. Jan, uh, Jan, Jen is going to pick her winner on Tuesday. And um, man, I started feeling so bad for Jonathan when he got voted off last week. Um, man, can you imagine like being in front of three guys who like you kind of like love them all in a very different way and you have to say goodbye to one? I don't know. I just feel like it's it's got to be sad because, you know, polygamy exists for a reason. Some people and I do believe you can love multiple people at once. Some on very different levels, right? Like surface level, attraction level, deep connection, emotional level, right? So I think the word I love you has a lot of depth and, and it, it can be very broad in my opinion. So for, for her to like, you know, express love to all of these people, rightfully so. Like, I don't think that you are lying ever by doing that. You know, I think you can love multiple people at once, especially in a show like that. But next up we have Grant. He will be the bachelor this next season, which is going to be awesome. I think he's going to have a really good season. I think he's going to be a good lead and he is so fine. He is so, when I tell you that man is so fine. He was my number one pick from the beginning of Jen season, um, him and Austin. And then, um, which makes sense because Austin kind of like resembles Wyatt a little bit, (laughs) but Grant on the other hand, um, he's, you know, uh, like nice. I think, I don't, I want to say he's black, but he might be biracial too. I don't really, I don't know his like parents or whatever. He didn't make it to hometowns. Okay. I didn't get to look, but he is, he's got that nice, that nice skin, that beautiful smile. He's tall as fuck. He was a basketball player. Going to be a great season. Like I'm very excited. And, um, then we got that golden bachelor too. golden bachelorette, Joan. Listen, motherfuckers. If you go back to my episodes during Gary's season of the golden bachelor, first ever season, right? Obviously last year. I called it from the fucking beginning that Joan, when she left, that she was going to be bachelorette, golden bachelorette. I fucking called it. Go back. Listen, bitch. We have receipts. I swear. I swear I called it. And if not, I told someone else, but I swear to God, I told you guys. And so she's got her season coming up. Um, And is it, whose dad's on it? Is it Rachel's dad? Someone's dad is on it, but it's going to be, it's going to be a good season too. And he is so handsome. We got some nice little, what, silver fox energy in the golden bachelorette. So I'm stoked for that too. It'll be, it'll be a goodie. And I like watching the golden and the golden era, I guess, if you want to call it, they've only had one season, you know, obviously going on too, but I think it just reminds you that like, you don't, you don't have to like age, you know what I'm saying? Like you can stay as young as you want to, as long as you want to, it, it is truly a mental thing. Cause like our bodies will age, but our minds won't. And it just gives me a zest for life to realize how much we have ahead, you know, and, and how much life we get to live and enjoy and grow through. And in it, it, aging can be so scary. You know, when you think of yourself aging and you just start spiraling of like, you know, your body aging and your mind aging and what comes next, you know, and all these things, it can be so scary, but seeing people and really listening to stories from those that are older than us, wiser than us and been there, it, it can give you so much peace and like clarity that like my life doesn't have to stop quote unquote, just because I, I, I'm old enough to retire, you know, like really life can just begin. And I, I truly think that like, I see a lot of people that are living in their, you know, mid fifties, early sixties, late sixties. And they're, they're still fucking kicking it, bro. Like having fun, like no responsibilities, fucking social security, which, you know, probably won't be around by the time we retire guys, but, um, it's, it's cool. And so it does, it gives me a little bit of hope. So bachelor, bachelorette, golden bachelorette, all slays. And, um, I did watch, start watching the show on Netflix called King of Collectibles. And, um, I thought it was going to be dumb, but it's honestly one of the coolest fucking shows ever. If you're in bed and you're just looking for something to kind of waste time, maybe be on your phone, chilling, relaxing, de-stressing while having a good background show. That is the show for you. King of Collectibles on Netflix. The other thing I started watching, but kind of stopped. And I think I mentioned it last week was Dark Matter. This is on Apple TV. It's based off a book. And I really would love to get into reading again, dude. I think I've said this every fucking episode for like literally five months and I have not picked up a book. I'm such a fake, um, like in my mind would love to read in my heart would love to read in my time. Don't have time. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I have time though? I definitely do. I could fucking make time. Like by no means. I try never to say that. Oh, I don't have time. It's like, we always do. We just don't prioritize it. And that's okay. So I'm admitting I haven't prioritized it, but dark matter. It's really good. Um, I think, like I said, I mentioned it last week. It's very, um, 
kind of like think of like the upside down in like Stranger Things. It's kind of got that element of like alternate realities and it, it kind of fucked me up like mentally. Like it kind of, it made me spiral. So I can only watch so much at one time. I can't like necessarily binge it. That's on Apple TV. And yeah, I've just been watching a ton of Blue's Clues, ton of Zaboomafu, um, Stinky Dirty. These are all on Amazon Prime with the boys. We also did rent the brand new Despicable Me, Slay. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, exciting news. I guess I will share with this with you guys before we get into some secrets. Um, my dad and his girlfriend are actually going to take the boys tonight as you're, as you're listening. They're going to take them tonight to my dad and my girlfriend, my dad and his girlfriend's house for an overnight. And the boys have actually never done an overnight before. And, um, I'm super excited because they, they love my dad. Like we call him pop pop. And, um, I, you know, I, I fucking love my dad, you know? And so I'm, I'm very excited, which, um, is going to be nice. So it's just me, Wyatt and Evie tonight. And that'll be kind of nice even for Wyatt and I to just kind of, you know, maybe sit out on the porch together. Like, I don't know, just kind of hang out, maybe do something, make it almost like a date night, even though we still kind of have half a kid. And yeah, I'm stoked. With that, I just wanted to lead into one more point of on one of my posts last week on Instagram, I asked people what they thought about sleepovers. I had a, a humongous response. I was, I was very shocked at the passion, but also showing how many moms I, I really do have kind of on my page now, which is awesome. I fucking love you guys. And if you're not a mom, I fucking love you too. Like, don't get me wrong. I fucking love all of you. But um, a lot of people talking about sleepovers, a lot of people that were in law enforcement or ex-law enforcement or CPS social workers, stuff like that, who kind of gave their two cents and are like, yeah, fuck no, I'm never doing sleepovers. I think there comes a certain time and like age to uh, allow them when you can articulate and speak with your children about what is appropriate, what is not, when they need to call you, when they need to tell you things, et cetera. And I really hope to foster such an open relationship with my children that they can come to me and, and very much just like come to me and be like, mom, I slept with Johnny. You know, it's like, okay, we're sexually active. I'm going to remain calm. Okay. What's going on? You know, did he make you, how are you feeling? Like, I want to be able to, my kids come and tell me that, like, it's going to be hard to hear sometimes. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be hard to hear sometimes the reality of what my kids are doing, right? When at the end of the day, you think, holy shit, I did the same thing at the same age. I get it. But I want to foster that environment. So I'm hoping, you know, one day sleepovers can become a thing. Um, Or honestly, it could just be very late curfew. You know, hey, sorry, you're not spending the night. You can come home. It's going to be be home by midnight, but you still got to come home. Um, Or, you know, at the end of the day, I will I will come and get you. I will come and get you. Um, but I would be curious if you guys are comfortable dropping your thoughts in the comments of what you think of sleepovers. What age, do you allow sleepovers? Because like for my kids to go to my parents, my moms, my dads, my sisters, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. You know, you start extending it out to, you know, those those extended people, like random ass people, again, sleepovers with people from school or something. Hard pass for me. Hard pass for me. And- I want to be the house that hosts, to be honest. I'd rather have a messy house and host than have my kids go elsewhere and like not know parents or the guardians, whatever it might be, unless we have a very tight knit relationship, you know, maybe they like play sports together or something. But anyway, I don't even have to worry about that yet. But I just, I thought of my dad uh, taking the kids this weekend. That's, that's going to be their first overnight without us somewhere else. Every other time they've done an overnight they have been at my house. So even if we're not there, right? Like my mom will watch them at our house in their beds, right? And so this will be the first time that they are somewhere else, but also without us, you know, like not just like an Airbnb or a hotel where again, they've stayed before, but I'm talking like a full real overnight, ta-ta, see you later. Um, And it's just for a night, but it'll be good. It'll be good to warm them up. So yeah, wow, my podcast has no, we have no structure here. Um. Yeah. Are we okay? (laughs) Tell me a secret. Tell me your darkest shit. Let me take a sip. Okay, I think Evie's up, so we're going to have to fucking blaze through this shit. My podcast, I feel like more more feel like short stories now. (laughs) Because I can't really sit down here and talk. Lame. Hey. Hey. 
Not really a secret, but just something I'd love for you to discuss. Can you please touch on intimacy after baby? My partner and I are really struggling. Our baby's now 18 months old. We've had sex one time. It feels so foreign to us now, almost like we don't even know how to get back into it. For some context, we live hours away from all family. I stay at home with the baby. He works 45 to 50 hours a week. I did breastfeed for 12 months. My libido was non-existent during that time. I figured when I stopped, my libido would come back, but it hasn't really made much of a difference. Shockingly, even though without sex, our relationship's solid. And it's like we almost forgot what it is. Don't even know if we're missing it anymore, if that makes sense. That is a great topic because I will say it's it's very real. All right. Um, I'll be full transparency. Why it's getting his vasectomy this week on Friday. Um, and by, you know, by now it's Sunday. So he has gotten his vasectomy. We have not had sex yet. Um, postpartum one, one time, like we were going to, and then we, we didn't have condoms. And honestly, I think right now we're both kind of scared of the potential of like getting pregnant again, even just fucking accidentally. Like we would be the people that 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 would happen to, you know? So I think he's almost scared to touch me and I'm almost scared to touch him in that way. So, you know, that's when you just do a little bit of different stuff. Um, but even then I'm not going to sit here and be like, Oh, we've been so sexual. Like it happened like twice, you know, like don't like it's, I, I'm not, I'm not here to paint a picture that is not real either. Now, 18 months having sex one time, not, not going to lie. That's, that is, that's crazy. Like that good for you. Like good for you guys to just be able to be chilling and respect those boundaries of each other. I think that's huge. So my first thing would be intimacy after baby, very common to not, not want it. There's a lot of resentment in your, in your couple, in your relationship as a couple, there is a lot of, like you said, foreign, your body can feel foreign. How you get turned on can feel foreign. You might, you know, what you might've been into before you're not into now, um, you know, whatever it might be. A few different things that I think can help. Number one, just acknowledge it. It is a phase. Okay. Number two, Sometimes when you just like kind of start making out, even if you don't want to, okay, I'm not saying like non-consentfully weird shit. I'm talking just like, just try it. Sometimes when you just get back into that, you, you kind of get, you're like, okay, maybe I am horny. And then you have sex and you're like, shit, I should do that more often. You know, like it's so funny. It's always an after sex realization where you're like, why don't I do that as much? Why don't we do that more? You know, it's, it's funny, but with, with kids and with life and additional stressors. And again, you're home with the kid all day. You, you're probably very touched out. Like it's, it's common. It's normal. It's okay. I don't think it's anything to be embarrassed about. And it doesn't mean your relationship doesn't thrive a few months ago. Oh my God. Months ago. I mean, I'm talking like last year around this time I had Vanessa and Xander Marin on my podcast. Uh, Vanessa is a sex therapist. That's a really great episode to go listen to. If you guys haven't, it's old, so it's probably a little outdated, but it's good. Oh, hi, Archie. What are you doing? What? Come here. Come sit. Hi, I love your mom. I love my mom. I love your mom. What's your name? Um, Daddy. What's your name? Um, Archie. Yes. What's my name? Mommy. What's your brother's name? Daddy. Oh, what's your brother's name? Mommy. Don't, don't touch the buttons. Oh, why? Because I said so. Oh, why? Because I said so. Okay, you got to go find Dad. Bye. Bye. Love ya. Love ya. <laughs> okay, toodles. Your dad's here. Look, he's going to get you. Oh, gosh. Okay, family affair. Come say hi. Hello. Here, look at the What's your name? My name is Alex. How old are you? I'm, I'm sweet. I'm sweet. <laughs> is your birthday coming up? Yeah. How old are you going to be? I'm going to be three. I'm going to be four. Cool. Do you like your mom? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's, your, what's my name? My name is Alex. What's my name? Your, ma- your name Mommy. What's my real name? Dad. What's Dad's name? Mm, quiet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh God. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys are touching buttons now. We can't do that. Okay, uh, mom's got to finish up. Mommy's at work, boys. Okay. So, anyways, um, very. <laughs> what was I even saying? No, I kind of remember. Um, okay, a few things to help this. I- I'm just gonna start there. A few things I think to help this. Um, listen to the Vanessa and Xander podcast number one. Oh, so what I was gonna say is that some people can be super happy and only have sex like once a year 
and still be just as happy in their relationship. Some people can have sex once a day and be just as happy in their relationship. Sex is so relative to each individual person. There is not like this golden platter number of like, hey, you have to have sex this often to be happy. It doesn't exist. It's not real. Every couple varies. So a few things to help is number one, listen to that podcast. Number two, I'm so I'm telling you, start reading spicy books. Like take time to read smut. You will be so horny, like for fucking real. Like I'm so serious. It's like, it's like Viagra for females. Like it's crazy. You, you read Akatar, like dead ass read Akatar. Go back, go, dust the, sh- dust the fucking dust off and read 50 shades of gray. Like you'd be, you'd be shocked at how much that stuff can kind of like get your brain going and be like, and then take it out on your spouse. Right. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, like I said, just tr- try to like make out a little bit, you know, and then you'd be shocked at maybe like wanting more, you know, and I don't know if you're into this, um, but like maybe both of you guys like blindfold each other. Like you don't have to do it eat to each other sexually either. Just both of you like put a night mask on and just like explore each other. Sometimes when you take away that sense of like, especially sight, you can feel, um, the other sense is heightened and it can be like way more like sexy. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of what, those are some things I would say. Now, if you guys are kind of okay without it, like, you know, it is what it is, but it is, it's still nice to connect with your partner in that way, especially when you have kids, life gets away from you. And to have that physical intimacy is still important. And I'm not telling you, you got to like suck his dick every night of the week or like have sex five times a week, but you know, to do it here and there and when it feels natural and, you know, maybe sending each other like some spicy texts or like sending a little tit pick, you know, those things can kind of take you back to even just like your, the beginning of your relationship, the college stage, like when you guys would like Snapchat nudes or like, you know, whatever you would do, right? Like try to replicate that energy and it can kind of lead to like a, like, Ooh, you know, spicy. And trust me, I'm not perfect at it. Um, I'm not perfect at it. It's really hard, especially when you added more kids, you know, you're like, you're just like not even thinking about sex by the end of the day. But for you and your partner to also be kind of like, hey, all hands in, one, two, three, team, and understand that this is a phase of your life where you you truly are teammates is important too. So if anything, I think for you guys to be still in a really solid place with that is awesome. Don't think of it as being embarrassed about it, but I do hope it comes back for you because it, it can sometimes, like I said, and I've said multiple podcasts, you can kind of feel like broken. You know, you're like, what's wrong with me? And yeah, I'm just, I'm sending hugs to you because I totally get it. Um, but at least you're, you're acknowledging it and you have like an understanding of where you guys are at and, and honestly where you want to be at too. Sorry, that was so long winded. Trigger warning, domestic violence. It's been about a year now that I've been dealing with my boyfriend being abusive. It's been a long, hard ride. He has anger problems, so when he gets mad, it's either me or my house that takes the beating. I've wanted to leave so many times, but we have a two-year-old, and I can't imagine having to split time with her. I feel like I'd rather deal with his outburst than have to be without my daughter. Long story short, we were driving, and I said something that made him angry. He started shoving me in the car and pulling my hair as I was driving. Ugh. He grabbed my hair and I couldn't see, causing me to have to hit the braids. This continued as he spit on me and tore the rear view mirror from my windshield. Next thing you know, red and blue lights were behind us. A car behind us saw what was going on, called 911. In the midst of my boyfriend hitting me, I managed to shove him off me and make his nose bleed. There was some minor blood on my face in his, in his, my hands in his face. The officer asked me to step outside the car and want to know what happened. He said, witnesses of him grabbing me. He asked where the blood was from. I said, I pushed him off me. After speaking with my boyfriend, the officer turned everything on me. Said that because my daughter was in the car, he could have her taken away from me for endangerment. He said, I can't hit my boyfriend while driving a car with my daughter in the car. I broke down. This is why women don't speak up. A worried bystander called 911 because I was getting abused in the car. And somehow this was now all my fault. The officer told me to say my arguments for at home and asked my boyfriend if he felt safe with me. Wow. What has this world come to? How is it that the man always comes out on top? None of my friends or family know what's been going on. My boyfriend's parents know and they just brush it off, probably because his dad is abusive too. I need to get myself and my daughter away from this mess, but I don't know how. The house we live in is mine. I'm afraid I will try to, if I try to kick him out, things will get worse. I'm lost. I'm scared. I don't know how to move forward. Sincerely, one broken mama. Holy fuck. If you guys listen to that, I hope that that 
that you acknowledge the trigger warning. Cause that is very, 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 very fucking terrible. Um, Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, I'm not law enforcement. I'm not a therapist. I am just here virtually as like a friend to you guys, you know, and if this was my friend and you were like in person, I would do quite literally anything I could for you. I want you to know that I genuinely don't know how these things go. Um, I don't know where you can go to like get help, um, where you can share things like that. I know from like TV shows that you should probably file police reports anytime something happens, just so you have a record of what's been going on. And, um, that, you know, when something does happen, you can show them that and they can put, you know, your daughter in your custody, knowing that he has anger problems, et cetera. Um, I, I think the first step would be to talk to, I would assume like your family and then getting help from there, or maybe lawyer up right away, like find a lawyer. Maybe some lawyer could also maybe like work pro bono, you know, not expect like payment from you, but do it out of like saving, you know, your life potentially as well as your daughter's. Like, I don't know. You never know how bad that stuff can get. Like think of how many times, like, you know, you want to rash out, but you contain yourself. Some people can't contain themselves, you know? And so I would want you to be safe your fear, your fears of being lost and scared are so valid. Um, that makes me scared for you. You know what I mean? So know that there's someone out there that cares just as much that is in your circle. I wish I could do something. If any of you guys have any resources, any words, anything, if you could message me, I can share these to my story today. This looks like a recent submission. So if you guys could share those with me, um, I can repost them to whoever this anonymous person is. And I hope that they can see this and and then see it on the Instagram. Um, that just breaks my heart. No, we don't deserve, women don't deserve that. And I'm, I'm not a very, I'm not, I personally don't like, I think we need men and we need women. Do you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, like, I'm not like, Oh, fuck every man. Because at the end of the day, like I have a, I have an amazing husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm not like so extreme. I don't know, would you call it extreme feminist? Like I do think there's still a yin and a yang that we all need each other, right? So to say, you know, oh, why do men come out on top? Absolutely, like it is fucking frustrating because nine out of 10 times that is what happens. That doesn't mean fuck the other men who are truly trying to fight for women like us, but you know, it, it's annoying. So I, I I don't know, I wish, I, I can't believe that cop did that to you um, and that bystander like called for you and then you get, Like, yeah, that's so fucking bullshit. So sending hugs, please send resources so I can share them with this person. Okay, just a few more. Cause like I said, I think Evie's up. When my husband and I first hooked up after, okay, wow. What a a transition. Sorry, that's a hard turn, right? When my husband and I first hooked up after wanting each other for years, timing with our ages as he's older, high school, college transition, other relationships never lined up. We were always friends. The poor guy got whiskey dick. He drank a classic four loco, the kind with the full caffeine and still curses them to this day for ruining our first time. It obviously didn't stop me from continuing our relationship. We successfully had sex the next morning, and he was the first guy to make me orgasm, and more than once. Chef's kiss. We've been together now for 10 years. Sincerely, the girl who finally got that dick. Okay, that is crazy. Whiskey dick is so terrible, especially when you're not as drunk, and they just, like, keep going and going and going, and then by that point, you're, like, drier than the Sahara, and you're like, bro, can we stop? Why it was the first person to actually make me orgasm too. I didn't really know. I didn't really know I hadn't ever, you know, like I didn't really know that. I don't know. This sounds so naive. I didn't really know that was like a thing. Like I didn't grow up in a household where we spoke about stuff like that or like anything of that nature. And so I didn't really even know like what I was missing out on until like college. And then it happened. And I was like, wait, was that like, is that what that is? Like, what is this? Yeah, that was an out-of-body experience for sure. Oh, my God. Okay, oh, my God. Some of you guys set in submissions that are long as fuck, and I, I just only have a few more minutes, so I'm trying to find some, like, kind of shorter ones to rattle through. But, I mean, I will be honest. We took a lot of time talking about that sex and relationships and intimacy after kids especially, but I think that can go true for a lot of people. I'd been in a period before where even, like, not – married, not have kids yet. I mean, you go through dry spells, like it's very common and it's just, you know, it's not common to talk about. Cause like it, it is very, it's, 
it's an intimate thing for a reason, you know, so to publicly just be like, Hey guys, I'm going through a drive spell. What's good. I overshare, but like not that much. No, I don't know. I, I do overshare that much. Actually, sometimes I've talked about it before, but it's not, oftentimes it doesn't lead to, because there's a problem in your relationship, but just, there's a lot of stuff going on, like with us all the time, like as women, like hormonally changes, mood swings, coming off of birth control, being on birth control, like there's so many moving factors for us when like for men, they just kind of like can get it up at any moment. Like I wish, I wish it was like that for real. Hi Des, absolutely love this segment. Anywho, caught my husband watching porn and jacking off in bed next to me. That's wild. But also, you know, they do it. So it's like, it's wild to to witness. (laughs) I immediately jumped up and called him out. He then, of course, lied and said he was looking at pictures of me and jacking off to them. Clearly a lie. After me freaking out a bit more, probably an hour later, he admitted to watching porn and I got him to confess which porn star and all the details. Now, every time I leave the house and even shut my eyes to go to bed, I get paranoid he's watching it. I suppose my secret is I watch porn too and also have done some self-love, if you know what I mean. So why am I so crazy jealous of watching him do it? But I do too. Help. I hate being the hypocrite of a wife, but I know... But damn, knowing what he watches and gets off to, it drives me nuts. Love always, horny hypocrite. Okay, I can commend you for... I can commend you for, like, being for real. You know, like, you, you're you being so serious here where you're like, hey, I don't know why this is bothering me. I am being a hypocrite. What should, what should I do, you know? This is... I think porn, okay, porn first and foremost in relationships, I think it is it is so toxic. You know, there's a reason why some people literally go to almost like rehab for be- being ad- addicts of like sex and like porn and stuff. It can really invade a person's mind and really throw off the natural things that occur in sex versus what occurs as actors. You know, porn stars are, they're acting for a reason, you know, and um I think porn has its benefits sometimes because it can kind of kickstart your, you know, little libido moment and, you know, kind of get you going. But I don't think it's always good in relationships because when you notice they're doing it kind of like how you just did, your paranoia is high. And then you're kind of like, okay, what am I not doing that this person is? Or, are they just using it for the the emotion, right? Like, so for you as a woman, when you watch porn, it's not necessarily that you're going, oh my God, that dude's cock is so big, I want it. Like, it, for us, it's not that. It's just kind of getting that emotional, like, stimulation going of like, okay, like, I'm kind of in the mood now. I just, I need to self-release. Like, we don't look at it as, as we don't always look at it as for what it is. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? I think you might be following me. But men can look at what we would assume we, they look at porn and they take it for exactly face value, right? Like look at her tits, look at the way she's like bouncing on that dick. Like it's very real for them. When for us, we're looking for it for more of that emotional release. When for them, it's, it's like all of it in combination, right? So when we know our spouse or our boyfriend or anything is like in taking that content, it can be, it can make us self-conscious Because I think also we are then expected to do these crazy things in the bedroom that are like, it's not fucking real. Like it might be real in your mind as a male that might really get you turned on, but it's not a reality that most women are down to like do that spinning shit on your, you know, on the bed upside down while having a banana up their butt. Like it's, that's fake, you know? So I think that can be why maybe natural paranoia can exist when like, So for you to be like, oh, it's okay if I do it, but not for him, because you can take it as a grain of salt, so to speak, right? You can take it as, yeah, this is not real. I literally don't care. I'm just trying to get, you know, feel, feel good real quick. And it's not that maybe your spouse can't do that for you. It just might've been a moment where you're like, okay, I just, I need like an emotional release. I need to like, feel like, oh, I just need to de-stress. It's kind of like fucking smoking a cig. Like I just got to go use my vibrator. Like it is what it is, but for guys, you know, they can, they just have maybe a different emotional reaction to it. It's, I don't know how to explain what I'm saying. Am I explaining it? Well, like, I don't know. So I I don't think you're being a hypocrite is like negative in that situation. It's, I think it's because you know, 
the intake of that content as a male is so different than the way that females can take it. I don't know. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, I just think porn all the way around is just, it, it's really touchy. I've only watched it ever like a handful of times. And even then again, it's like, I've caught myself being like, why am I doing, like, this isn't even my style. Like I, I genuinely could like, just think of my husband and I in an intimate setting and that's enough for me. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't need the screenplay of two random people, but even in those times, I can picture those two random people as myself and my husband versus looking at who those people really are, right? When again, you think of it flip side for a male, it's like, okay, how often is he envisioning you? Like it's a fair like worry of you being like, oh my gosh, like I'm now stressed because he's just beating his meat, not thinking of me. Totally fair. Um, I don't know. That's, it's a really complex thing. Um, and especially in relationships, it's not really like something you sit down you're like, okay, babe, let's talk about our screen time and let's talk about, let's talk about porn. How much are you watching? Like you don't, you don't, it's kind of goes unsaid and sometimes it's better left unsaid because like now you've seen it and you know, it exists. Even if you knew in your mind, oh, I know he's probably doing that out of sight, out of mind. When you see it happen, it just brings us different reality. And you're like, fuck, now I have to like, think about this. I don't know. Hopefully you can get past it. It's not a make or break. It's just, okay, that leads to an uncomfortable conversation. What do we got to talk about? Anyways, I'm out of here, guys. Evie's up. I can hear her. I got to like get to going, get to stepping. And, you know, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate the love, the support. And for those of you who choose to listen, um, also appreciate ya. And yeah, 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 yeah. Cheers. Have a great Sunday. And, uh, We'll plan on being back next week. You know, at this point, you never know. You never know until you know. But we do plan on new episodes every Sunday. So join me for my challenge. Don't miss out. And let me know what you guys guys think.